it's it's always like a really cool thing for me uh whenever uh you know I'm on this platform on grown man sessions and I feel like it's something that uh you know myself or anybody else can truly like learn from and I feel like that's about to happen because uh, my next guest uh his name is Max goes by Max Bundles um he's going to like share something personal with us and I feel like, you know, it takes a lot of courage and it takes a lot of vulnerability um, to be able to go, come on a platform like this and actually open up like that. So um, I just want the, the message to be that, you know, uh, being vulnerable and being uh, open about your own personal growth and, and your own story is not a negative thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like that can come across like the word vulnerable can come across in like a negative way to some guys, you know, and maybe something that we learn along the way. Um, but I definitely don't think that that's the case. Um, I actually think it takes a lot more strength and a lot more courage to be vulnerable than it is to just keep, you know, things hidden and keep things like, you know, under wraps. So without further ado, let me bring my guest on. What's up, Max? How you doing, brother? Good, man. How you doing? Pretty good, man. Thank you for uh, making time to come on. I really appreciate it. Definitely appreciate your time. Yeah, I know we've been going back and forth for a while, man, and trying to get this thing going, man. So I appreciate you being patient with me. Um, I know you got a busy schedule yourself because, you know, you got you got the Max and Patrick cartoon popping off, man. And I want to get into that. Uh, but before we do, man, uh, just let us know, like, uh, a little bit about your background, man. Where did you grow up? You know what I'm saying? Like, what was it like for you, like, as a young Max? You know what I'm saying? Like, so we can get a little bit of your personal side. Uh, as, far, as far as where I grew up... Um... I definitely grew up in the Sacramento area. Well, I, I lived in like the Citrus Heights, Orangevale area for um, pretty much most of my kid teenage life. I was born in New York. Um, I lived out in the Bronx till I was six. So I came out here, I want to say like maybe your first grade. Um, and that was, it was kind of a culture shock, shock for me because I mean, I was only six years old. So like you would think that you're too young to understand what's going on. But the, you know, I, I was in the Bronx where it's like, you know, a huge percentage is Puerto Ricans out there. So, um, you know, the slang was different, the attitude, personality. So, like, I was just hearing words out here, like, rad and awesome and dude. And, like, I was like, oh, you know, because, like, I only heard that on TV. So, it was just, it was weird because um, my, my parents felt the same way. Like, we actually, um, there used to be a Lucky's uh, grocery store on Greenback um, towards my, in my house. And we were doing some grocery shopping. And my... um. The, the girl that the cashier she was just like some valley girl and she was you know just saying like uh -huh, like and doing all this like ditzy stuff and my parents are like we thought she was kidding with us but she was actually she actually talks like that that's crazy <laughs> <laughs> um so that took some getting used to and then ex explaining to people that i was puerto rican was kind of a thing too that that was a that took some getting used to because you know like there's a lot of puerto ricans in new york so you know it's you know that's just what it was I remember going to the Puerto Rican festival in San Jose, like, you know, back in the early 2000s. And I was like, man, this is popping. But then my boy that I was with, he was like, "You," he's like, this ain't nothing, Tim. He's like, you got to go to the one in New York with me one year. And I'm like, man, like I've seen pictures and videos and I was like, yep, I'm going one of these years. I'm going. Yeah. Like just coming. I, I want to say, I, I remember a lot from like maybe first through fourth grade, a lot of people were just like, you know, what are you? I'm like, oh, I'm Puerto Rican. And so many people were just like, oh, like what, what part of Mexico is that? And it's like, um, well, <laughs> um, yeah. So like, um, it's like, yeah, let's not go there. Yeah. That's funny, bro. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I can kind of relate, man. I think, uh, you know, being in, in Southern California and coming from Northern California, like you, you have a different slang, you have a different kind of cultural makeup of like how people, you know, associate or whatever, like it's more diverse up north. People mix right. a lot more. And uh, when I came down here, you know, I kind of, I realized, I didn't realize it's up north, but I realized that I have a Northern California slang and accent. And I come down here and like the Mexicans are like more, you know, kind of more cholo, you know, like they have a little bit more of that slang and accent. So they're looking at me like I'm weird and I'm looking at them like they're weird. And I'm like, oh, I, okay, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's funny because my, uh, I have a cousin that lives in Orange County, uh, Mission Viejo, and he used to come up to visit um, here a lot in high school. And well, uh, he came up here a few times. And anytime I would say "hella," he was—he's just like, "What?" I'm like, "Hella." He's like, "What? What does that mean?" I'm like, "You know, like a lot of, you know, or just 
a bunch and he's like no like he just had no idea what that meant so like anytime i um you know said that word he would just look at me like oh hello you know and i was like dude shut up you know but, um so i'm just like all right my cousin just doesn't know but then i want to say maybe the following year um the the band no doubt um who was really famous at the time they put out that song hella good and um they were interviewing Gwen Stefani and she was saying how she was in San Francisco and everyone was saying hella and like she thought that was weird so like I kind of connected I'm like so people in Southern California don't know what that means so this is like a NorCal thing you know I'm like 16 I'm like being this just like oh it, that's hella is a hella NorCal you know like <laughs> yeah it is it is I started saying it down here and like people would be like oh yeah you're from Northern California it's yeah here, I used to try to not say... say that word too much on tour like when I used to be active musically like Anytime I was in LA or San Diego, it's like, all right, just don't say hello. Don't say hello. <laughs> uh, fast forward, you know, like some odd years, man. Now you're doing uh, Max and Patrick, bro. And uh, I can't I can't tell you enough, man, like how much I really like that stuff. It's it's so creative and, you know, it's it's got a, like a really dope sense of humor and it, it incorporates a lot of different elements of like, I'm sure, like, you know, your own interest, but then things that probably a lot of people can relate to as well. So Thank talk you. to Appreciate me about uh, talk to me about Max and Patrick, bro. Like what what inspired you to to get that going and and uh, you know what's the what's the creativity behind that? Well, it, it's weird. It kind of fell on my lap uh, by mistake. I, I I was doing my radio show all those years, you know, along with voiceover uh, gigs, uh, roommates, cats acting funny. Um, so uh, yeah, I was doing like radio and voiceover all those years, um, and then uh, just randomly I, I got a a free uh, bootleg version of Premiere Pro. So I was, I learned how to do some video editing. Uh, it was, it wasn't really something that I saw myself getting into. I was just like, Oh, I don't know. That just looks a lot harder than audio editing, but I, you know, tried a few times and it, it was pretty much this, the same thing just with video. So I was like, okay, I can, you know, learn some stuff here. So, you know, I started making a lot of videos there with just like actual footage and special effects. And I eventually thought, well, I want to get more into like color visuals, animation, uh, things of that nature. So I um, got into animation. I downloaded just, you know, some cheap um, uh, two dimensional software, made some videos with that, that the characters kind of, well, I made a character that kind of looked like me. And then the character that looks a little bit like Patrick now, like just um, dancing at a punk rock concert. And I just, I got really attached to the video. I was like, I can make some more clips with these guys. Um, and at the same time, I was thinking, like, I feel like, well, I'm doing the radio thing too. Maybe I could somehow combine what I'm doing with like the radio show and, you know, these short animated clips. So I'm thinking I could make, you know, just either like an animated visual radio show or maybe just an actual like cartoon with a storyline um, where I could actually promote music. So I, you know, I did a bit of both. And uh, yeah, um, it, it's crazy because I started out doing a few clips and then. I I made a 10 minute episode I sent to my friend Jason Hawkins who's running the 5XL channel on Roku and he's like yeah if you can get like maybe more original music on here independent music and get about maybe two hours worth of material we could definitely do something so <laughs> that really inspired me it's like okay cool so I just started pumping out episodes and reaching out to people like uh, you uh, Randall White Senior GGO um, um, Rose just a, a ton of really talented, talented artists and you know, so I put out the episodes and then once those were out, like people were reaching out to me like, hey, you know, like on this episode, like six minutes in, you know, when this happens, like who's doing that song, you know, and it's like, yeah, it's in the credits, but it's like the fact that people are hearing <laughs> new music and they're, you know, they're, they want to know who it is. It's like, okay, cool. It's like, I got a cartoon. It's, it's getting music out there. It's like people are learning about new artists, you know, just from my show. So I thought it was a great thing. Yeah, no doubt, bro. Right on, man. Well, uh, you know, kind of, kind of want to shift gears a little bit and uh, talk to you more about some more personal stuff. Um, I know when we first uh, scheduled this interview, uh, you told me that uh, one of your fun facts was that uh, you're related to J Lo, right? Uh, yeah, it's a uh, random, but yeah, the um, the singer Jennifer Lopez is actually my cousin. That's something that a lot of people don't know about me. I mean, that it's not really something I go out there just like you know like blabbing out about either but um yeah it's it's a it's a random fact right on man right on but then you had hit me up afterwards and you was like you know what tim like uh i have something else that i, I feel like i could share so man if it's a, you know i'll leave it up to you man to kind of uh, let us know what that is you know 
For sure, for sure. Yeah, like after thinking about it, I was like, yeah, that's a fun fact that people don't know about me, but something that actually might include growth in my life. You know, I figured I would talk about this. So, um, yeah, I did want to mention uh, for the first time publicly that um, uh, close to two years ago, I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And I I do feel that that has um, helped me grow a little bit as it, it makes me look at a lot of things differently in life. Just, you know, just being more health conscious. Um, yeah, just being health, health conscious and just looking out for um, just my diet and just taking safety precautions, especially, uh, now. Yeah, man. I, I mean, I, I hate to sound ignorant, man, but can you kind of give us a little bit of insight on what, uh, multiple sclerosis is? It's different for everybody. It's basically like a, a brain disease to where like your brain and nerves might not connect um, the right way in certain parts of your body. So like mm -hmm. some people, like half of their body might go out. Like some people lose their vision. Some people just might um like they might like you know they might have just like random spasms like or they might not be able to like move their arms like certain parts of the day like it's different for everybody um for me it affects my vision occasionally like just every like it's very lightweight for me um like every once in a while like in my um in my left eye like i'll feel like i get compressed vision so i might have to wear my glasses or not depending on you know if i'm reading a computer screen or you know driving or you know doing something like that um but when I first found out that I had it, um, yeah, I was at work close to two years ago and I was just getting up to get, get some water and I, it felt like my feet were asleep. So I'm just like, oh, okay, you know, it's like everyone has that. So, um, but later that day I was just home hanging out. I was watching TV and yeah, it was maybe like six, seven hours later from that moment. And my feet still felt the same way. I'm like, that's weird. Mm -hmm. You know? So, um, same thing. Like I went to bed and then I woke up in the middle of the night and I felt the same thing. I'm like, something's wrong, you know? So I, I thought maybe it was diabetes. Uh, so I, I went to the doctor, I got my blood checked, but I've actually been in, you know, like really, like fairly good health, you know? So they're like, no, uh, you're fine. Actually, there's no sign of diabetes. So they mm -hmm. wanted to test me for multiple sclerosis. They're like, have you ever had any issues with your vision? And I was like, well, maybe six or seven years ago, I, temporary lost vision in my left eye. Cause that was actually my first attack, but I, I had no idea. Um, mm. cause at that time, like I was kind of freaking out. Like I woke up and just one day I couldn't see out of my left eye. So I, no. I went to the ER and they were just like, uh, you have a swollen optic nerve. So, um, yeah, I mean, this happens sometimes to people, but we're going to give you medication for it. So they did. And I, I got my vision back maybe a couple weeks later and they said, sometimes it just happens and there's no explanation. So, was like maybe it was extreme stress or something so really going the next few years thinking nothing of it you know i'm at the hospital now or talking to the doctor now they're like well since you had those issues with your vision that long ago let's get you tested for multiple sclerosis and i didn't know what it was i thought it was just like a like a back injury or something i'm like well, what is it you know and they explain it and i'm like oh um so you know i went and got um they did a scan and so they tell me a couple of days later that i had it and i was like uh, all right. So, you know, of course I'm just sitting here thinking the worst is going to happen. You know, it's just like, Oh, like one day I'm just going to wake up and I can't walk or, or something, or I'm going to be blind. Like who knows? Cause it's, it's unpredictable. It is different for everyone that has it. So like some people have it and live like, you know, perfectly normal lives. Like, I mean, I, def I, I think my life is very normal actually. I mean, you can't even tell, like, you know, you see me walking around, like I still work out. I still go to the gym. Well, I was going to the gym before everything. Uh, um, you know, I still go on walks. I'm very active. I'm me. I'm actually very healthy for someone that has it, but a lot of people aren't as fortunate. Like some people will, they have to, you know, go in like wheelchairs or, you know, like walk on canes. Um, so I'm just focusing a lot on my strength and my diet right now. So I'm, I'm doing the paleo diet because that actually, they call it the caveman diet. Um, cause you eat a lot of foods just like, you know, natural, um, you know, fruits, yeah. veggies, meats, some st stuff that doesn't cause any kind of flare ups that, which is what I don't want. Um, so I've been sticking with that and that's been going good. Like I, I do, I guess I, you know, on the weekends and sometimes during the week, I'll just eat or drink whatever, but 90% of the time it's a paleo based diet. And I, I thought it was pretty awesome because there's a lot of stuff you can't have on it, but for like every one thing that you can't have, there's like 20 really good substitutes. Yeah, I had a buddy that uh, they used to do that and he loved it. And he said that he uh, lost a lot of weight and he was able to get in good shape. So, yeah, man, I think whatever 
whatever works for the individual is always a good thing. Um, is, is, is the, is the diet aspect of it? Um, does that help uh, prevent like symptoms from occurring? Uh, yes and no. Like there's actually, there's all kinds of different versions of it. Like mine's just like the basic paleo, but there's like the walls diet that they talk about, which I'm, I'm not very familiar with, but a, a lot of it is just, you know, eating like homegrown foods, you know, stuff like that. Um, uh, so like, and you know, a lot of it involves, you know, just like cooking all your own food, like no processed food. Um, so there's, there's a few different versions that have actually been known to, or some people have, you know, written stories that has cured it, but I mean, doctors or, you know, science can't really confirm that. So it's all just kind of like just based off opinion. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, like you can go on links and look at blogs and then you'll, you'll see some people saying like, Oh, well, it worked for me and other people like it didn't work for me. And then other people like, well, it, it's different for everyone, you know? So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's just kind of like just how it affects everybody, really. It's it's different for everybody. Um, I started, um, what was I going to say? Uh, I want to say the, when I first started doing paleo, like I was, I, it was a, with cauliflower pizza. Like I was like, oh, this is going to be gross. Because just the thought of like cauliflower with like pizza toppings was like, um, that's just nasty. But then I bought it from the store and yeah, I just baked one and yeah, it was great. I was like, all right, I can get used to stuff like this, you know, just switching from like fries to sweet potato fries, um, sweet potato mac and cheese, um, country gravy and biscuits with like, you know, like made with like almond flour and coconut milk, stuff like that. And like, it's, um, it's really interesting because, you know, it's just stuff I would normally, you know, just buy like, you know, from the store, like, and just go with like a typical recipe, but it's like, all right, I got to actually like go online and do a bit of research and like go differently about this. But once it's done, it's, it's like you can't really tell the difference. It's definitely worth it. Well, dude, you're you're completely invested in uh in your your longevity, man, in your long term health. So I mean, regardless of of what it is, man, I feel like uh, that's the best investment that we can we ever make in ourselves. You know, it's like our our physical health. Because um, I've had way too many friends over the past two years die, man, and um, I had a friend die in 2020. And she uh, she went to the hospital because she got sick and she just never recovered. Wow. And I don't I don't know what uh, what the exact, uh, you know, diagnosis was of, of the cause of death. Uh, but it's just, you know, we were the same age. And, right. you know, it, it, it's kind of like been a, a kind of an eye opener for me, um, you know, being at the age I am now to, to just kind of make sure I'm taking care of myself. You know, I have my kids. I have, you know, my wife and, you know, I I. I never was one to like take my health like very seriously, but over the past few years, dude, I've been, you know, on it, you know what I mean? Like trying to watch what I eat, work out more, take care of my mental health, you know what I mean? And even like my spiritual health, man. So uh, I give you a lot of uh, respect, man, and credit because uh, that that's that's not easy, man. And and I, I would hate for any of my friends, you know, saying yourself included to have to learn the hard way because, you know, I'm sure you you've heard in my songs or even through like just, uh, you know, stuff that I've posted that like I almost died in 2011. And, you know, I still didn't completely learn my lesson. I, you know, I still kind of was still not eating right and not taking care of myself as much as I should have. So, yeah, man, I give anybody that takes that step, you know, before they have to like learn the hard way. I give everybody credit for that because it shouldn't take that for us to want to take care of ourselves. You know what I mean? For sure. Thank you. Um, And I got kind of lucky, too, because. It, when I around the time I first met you, like when I was in Confused Clarity, I was close to 400 pounds. Um, so maybe a few years after that, I it was just very random. I I, I had a toothache, so I went to the ER just to get some painkillers. And when they checked my blood pressure, they were just freaking out. They're like, "Your blood pressure is really high," you know. And I'm like, "Well, is it maybe because I'm stressing out from the pain? Like, I just had a soda. Is it the caffeine?" They're like, "It could be a bit of both, but..." change your lifestyle. You know, I was like, <laughs> all right, noted, you know? So, um, <laughs> the next day I, I dropped soda. Um, I still ate a bit of junk, but I just, I dropped soda and I just started walking, uh, close to a mile every day. And then I started walking a mile every day. And then it got to the point where I just started walking until I didn't want to walk no more. Um, which I still walk all the time, not as much as I used to, but when I first started, like, I want to say, yeah, I went from just walking all the time to uh, eventually going to the gym and then watching my diet a bit more. So within a bit over three years, I lost 100 pounds. And I'm actually, I want to say I'm actually close to losing probably 200 now at this point. But like, I'm not really checking like, you know, how much I weigh now. It's just 
it's, I feel good now. So that's, that's the important thing. Cause for a long time, uh, when I was younger, I just, I was in fairly good shape, like in high school, you know, like doing like weights and all that stuff. And then afterwards I just kind of let myself go, but I kept convincing myself I was fine. Um, so, you know, once I got to that point, it's just like, all right, I really got to make some changes. Um, so yeah, I made those changes and yeah, I started feeling way better, but if I didn't take care of myself, you know, around that time and I, you know, had the MS, you know, still being around 400 pounds, um, might, it might be a different story. Like I might, you know, be walking with a cane or, or, or worse, who knows? Um, or, or not. I mean, it, it is an unpredictable disease, but the doctor even said like a huge reason I'm as well as I am now is probably because I just spent, you know, a good number of years taking care of myself. Uh, before we go though, I just wanted to ask you, cause I asked this of all my guests, man. And I, yeah. I uh, love the answers because they're always different. Um, what do you think is one of the most important lessons you've learned at this point in your life? Um, at this point in my life, um, there's like outside of this, I know I told you about some like personal stuff I've been going through and just trying my best to keep calm in situations. Cause, uh, I know in the past too, I've also mentioned that, you know, part of, you know, just growing up is just realizing that it's not, it's not always about you, like, you know, being happy all the time, but I do think a huge part of it is just trying your best to stay calm in every situation, which that's a huge thing I still need to learn. Um, you know, like I, I did go through some extreme stuff recently and as much as I thought I handled certain things, you know, in a calm fashion, like, it could be just like a random day where I'm minding my own business. And then all of a sudden, like a thought pops up and I'm just like hype strung all of a sudden, just like, Oh my God, you know? And it's like, wait, just, just calm, calm, calm down. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I really got to work on that myself. But um, I think, I think that's something that we all go through, um, uh, you know, here and there. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a overthinker. So I tend to, <sighs> I tend to, you know, like think of like all the different possibilities of, of outcomes that could happen for a certain scenario, you know, and I, I have to definitely get in my own way sometimes and just say, okay, that's enough, you know, like that's right. unnecessary. Right on, man. Well, thank you for sharing, bro. Like I, I, I completely, completely, completely appreciate you sharing your story, man, because this is the first time I've ever had anybody come on and, and share something about themselves that personal and I know it's not easy, man. So thank you. Um, I guarantee you that if somebody listening um, has a similar situation, they could definitely relate. And if they do relate, um, is there any way that they might be able to reach out to you? Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, I'm on Facebook as uh, Max Hernandez or, um, you know, if you want to reach out to me on Instagram and check out some good videos at the same time, uh, look up the Max and Patrick cartoon. It's all a bunch of cartoon clips, but it's me you're talking to if you send a message. So, Yeah. Yeah, please go check out the Max and Patrick cartoon. It's it's dope. Whether it's the cartoon itself that'll make you uh, laugh or or the music that you can vibe out to, man, it's a good time. I guarantee Thank you, you will like it. Um, check out Max and Patrick on the YouTube channel. And yeah, just go support because uh, it's uh, definitely some good content. And then it's also on Roku too, right? Yes, you could um, catch uh, recently released episodes on the, uh, the 5XL channel on Roku. And that's... Uh, Five is spelled the number five, then I V E, then X L. Uh, there's episodes of Max and Patrick, and then there's also some really good content from other uh, artists um, that are with the Five X L. Yeah, right on, man. Well, thank you again for your time, Max. I appreciate it. Um, I always end these interviews by saying that one person could change the world, but it's one person at a time, and that one person is you. If you guys have gotten anything from this uh, this episode, please hit the like, the subscribe. And please drop us a comment. We would love to know what you think and how we're doing. Um, and yeah, like in the meantime, till the next episode, please take care of yourself. Please be kind to yourself. Give yourself a little bit of grace and patience and just know that you're doing your best. And tune in for another Grown Man Sessions next time. Peace out, Max. Peace.